You may have Winston Churchill, born on November 30, 1874, was a British statesman, soldier, and writer. He had a fascinating family background. As his father Lord Randolph Churchill was a member of Parliament and his mother Jenny was the daughter of a wealthy American businessman. In his childhood, he faced difficulties with his studies. But at the age of 13, somehow he managed to pass the entrance exam for Harrow School. His father wanted him to prepare for a military career and so his last three years at Harrow were in the army form. After two unsuccessful attempts to gain admittance to the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst, he succeeded on his third and was accepted as a cadet in the cavalry. Sadly, his father passed away in 1895, a month after Crutchill graduated. These early experiences played a significant role in shaping Churchill's character and setting the stage for his future as a renowned leader. In history, Winston Churchill was known as one of the iconic heroes of the 20th century as he was very loyal to his nation. But no one knows about his dark side, do you? From 1895 to 1905, Winston Churchill's life took an interesting turn as he ventured into various roles and experiences. During this time, he served in different parts of the British Empire, including India and South Africa. In 1897, his involvement in the Malakand expedition in India, where he advocated for the use of excessive force against indigenous tribes. His support for aggressive military tactics showed his ruthless side. Then again from 1899 to 1900 during the Boer War in South Africa, he worked as a war correspondent and was captured by Boer fighters but in some way, he managed to escape which highlights his courage. But he was also criticized for risking his comrade's life. He began his political career by winning a seat as a Conservative Party candidate in the House of Commons. He served as Under Secretary of State for the colonies from 1904 to 1905. From 1906 to 1915. It was a time when Winston Churchill took a big political turn by switching political parties from the Conservative to the Liberal Party. From his new party, he won the seat of Manchester Northwest in the general election and becomes a member of Parliament. Then in 1908, he was appointed as the president of the Board of Trade in the Liberal government. But things changed when Churchill served as a Navy leader in World War I from 1914 to 1918. The war was fought between the Allies' powers and the Central Powers and Britain was in Allies' powers. To defeat the Central Powers, he came up with a plan called Gallipoli Campaign. But unfortunately, things didn't go well and the campaign turned out to be a big disaster. For his bad strategy, he even lost his position in politics for a while. On the other hand, he had issues with Ireland as he didn't like the idea of Ireland ruling itself and wanted Britain to have more power there. For this, he even sent troops to stop the Irish from wanting independence. From 1919 to 1930, Winston Churchill strongly supported British colonialism as he believed in the idea of powerful countries ruling over other smaller nations. In 1919, he was very much involved in a horrific incident called Jallianwalabad Massacre, where British soldiers killed thousands of innocent people including children, men, women, and old age, who were gathered there to protest against the Rolat Act. Churchill strongly supported General Dyer. Again, when he was the Secretary of State for the Colonies from 1921 to 1922 and was in charge of military actions in Iraq, as, during the Iraq campaign, there was a situation where some Kurdish tribes were fighting against British rule and Churchill made a decision that had a really bad impact on them. He gave permission to use chemicals, specifically mustard gas, against these Kurdish tribes. Because of this many people were killed, including the local population. He was not only cruel to other countries but also to his own country, as in 1926 there was a general strike in Britain where workers demanded to work in better conditions. But instead of understanding them, Churchill used military forces to deal with the striking workers. This didn't sit well with many people.
When Hitler came up as one of the most powerful leader in the world, it hampered Churchill and he warned the United Kingdom that he might become a big problem for the nation. But no one took him seriously, but there were some who wanted to avoid the war and for this, they came up with the policy of appeasement. As with the rising power of Hitler all over the world, he was afraid that Hitler might take over Britain. And that fear made him against the Nazi leader. But how can we forget that Churchill was the one who was admired by Hitler? In the initial years of Hitler, Churchill used to support him for his views and he even expressed his views publicly. From 1941 to 1950. It was a period when Winston Churchill gained the title of Prime Minister of the United Kingdom for the first time. Although he was praised for his leadership during World War II, he was also heavily criticized for handling the protests in the colonized nation and delaying the process of decolonization in many parts of the world. In 1943, when Winston Churchill was in charge of Bengal, a region in India, there was a terrible famine. And Winston Churchill made the situation even worse with his horrible decisions as he took away food supplies from India to use them for the war effort in other places. As a result, millions of people in Bengal didn't have enough food to eat, and many of them died from hunger and sickness. What's even more upsetting is that Churchill didn't act quickly to help the starving people. He didn't seem to understand the urgency of the situation, and he refused to provide the necessary aid that could have saved lives. This made a lot of people angry and aggressive. He also really didn't want India to become completely independent from British rule. He didn't listen to Indian leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, who wanted India to govern itself. Instead, Churchill insisted that Britain should stay in charge. But his beliefs and actions made the fight for Indian independence last longer and made things more tense and violent. These events led to his huge defeat in the general election in 1945. From 1951 to 1960. Despite losing the general election in 1945, he again won the election in 1951 and became the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom for the second time from 1951 to 1955. After the Second World War, he faced many challenges. His approach to the Cold War made things worse between the East and West. From 1952 to 1960, there was a rebellion in Kenya, where Churchill's government used harsh methods to suppress it, leading to human rights abuses. He also supported the development of nuclear weapons, which made some people worried about the risks of nuclear war. In addition, Churchill really didn't like communism, which is a political system where the government controls everything. He strongly disagreed with it and even supported getting involved in other countries to stop socialist governments. For example, he tried to change the government in Iran in 1953 which made some people question his commitment to respecting the choices and independence of other nations. He also supported the unfair system of apartheid in South Africa. He didn't want other countries to put sanctions or punishments on South Africa to make them change their discriminatory policies. Furthermore, during his rule in the United Kingdom, he didn't support important improvements like creating a welfare system or making sure everyone had access to healthcare. He also didn't want workers to have more rights, as he thought that they might go against him and it will make them more powerful. Instead, he was very much loyal to the rich and powerful people. He majorly focused on their needs and interests, even if it meant ignoring the well-being of everyday people. This made a lot of people feel like Churchill didn't understand their struggles or care about making their lives better. Last Days of Winston Churchill After his retirement as Prime Minister in 1955, Churchill continued to be an influential figure for his nation. Due to his worst health condition, he had to write her from his role as a member of parliament in 1964. He spent his remaining years at his country home in Chartwell, painting and writing his memoirs. He received numerous honors and recognition for his contributions to British history and the world. On January 15, 1965, at the age of 90, Winston Churchill passed away at his home. His state funeral was held in London, and he was laid to rest in Bladen, Oxfordshire, near his family's ancestral home. Although, this event shows a darker side of Churchill's way of dealing with conflicts. But it is important to remember that historical figures are complex and multifaceted, and Churchill is no exception. While his leadership and resilience during World War II cannot be ignored, it is equally important to critically examine the dark aspects of his legacy. 
Remember, history is not black and white, and understanding the dark side of figures like Winston Churchill helps us grow as a society and strive for a more just and inclusive future. So, what do you think about this controversial political leader? For his inhumane acts, can we compare him with Hitler or Mussolini? Do comment your thoughts on it and do not forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification for the latest updates.